Hello and welcome back. In the last video, we solved the single degree of freedom system, uh, neglecting the damping ratio and also under the forced vibration, this time with the harmonic load. Now we are going to have one example to show how it looks like in the solution. So this is the answer for or the response uh, for the applied load. Let's assume we have one beam which is under the force p in its center both ends the beam is rigidly connected to the supports and the length of the beam can be assumed to be l and e and i let's assume that p is coming from machine like a kind of pump and it has 100 kilogram weight or mass so the mass is 100 kilogram and let's assume that the frequency of this pump in the operational phase is going to be let's say 20 radian per second just to start uh, typically the pumps uh, are with higher value of uh, frequency but let's keep this 20 radian per second we can assume that the beam is from the section of hea 200 the length of 5 meters and e is 200 gigapascal now we are going to write down the equation of the force assuming that the force is going to be a sinus force so p as a function of t will be p0 times sinus 20 times t p0 is the force coming from the weight of the system we can assume that p0 is m times g and it will be 100 kilogram times 9.81 meter per square second so it will be 981 newton the only thing is the calculation of a stiffness k for calculation of a stiffness assume that we have a beam with a force of p and then the displacement in the center of this beam will be pl3 over 192 ei and the k is always force divided by deformation which will be 192 ei over l3 so we have k we have the mass we have the load and we can go through writing the matcat code easier to follow let's start to write basic information e equals to e equals to 200 gigapascal moment of inertia of hea 200 is 36.92 10 power by 6 millimeter power by 4 the mass is 100 kilogram the length of the beam we assume to be 5 meters what else omega is 20 radian per second k is 192 times e times i divided by l power by 3 natural frequency is a square root of k divided by m period will be 2 times pi divided by omega which is almost 0 0.02 seconds and frequency is 1 over t t3 beta as we went through is omega divided by omega which is 0 0.06 it is far from one which would result in other solution for the for the response of the system and now we can have our solution from here u as a function of t will be u0 times cosinus omega t plus u dot zero divided by omega minus p zero divided by k times beta divided by one minus beta power by two plus p zero divided by k times one divided by one minus beta power by two so p zero we need to have some values p zero will be m times g p t as a function of why we we do not need this because this is already written u0 zero, zero millimeter u dot zero zero millimeter per second and we have the solution u as a function of t let's go for t equals to zero up to let's say two seconds we can see how it looks like we can see this is the std vibration and between the all peaks we have some vibration which is the std uh, the, the the transient value so here we can see that the maximum deformation is around 0 0.1 millimeter because of this pump and vibration 
if you look at this value and change it to let's go with 30 we can see how it affects the solution if you want to see a better resolution you can change this uh, value of t intervals it was good one thousands and if we change this to 50 for example you can see the maximum is not changed the only thing that is changed is the transient part let's have a look on transient part by changing back this to 20 and here i multiply this by zero you can see this is the between 0 0.04 0 0.005 to minus 0 0.005 millimeter this is the part that is uh, happening when we consider this value here you can see and if i ignore that part here you can see that it's completely the same shape as the force which is the std vibration if we remove this part or if we consider that part you can see that some changes are coming to the intervals that is the effect of uh, transient and the overall activity or the overall the overall vibration is from the std response you can play with the values for example changing the u0 or u u.0 or other values to see how it looks like here we can go with the lower value of frequency or we can increase it to let's go with 200 we can see how it looks like now the value of beta is getting closer to one if i go to 500 for example you can see how it looks like we will come back to this later in the other video before we end this uh, video it's better if we get used to or know some parameters that are very useful in the dynamic of structures it helps us to uh, calculate and find out the maximum response in terms of deflection deformation or any other required information by using those factors let's bring these to the notes here if you look at the solution and also the equations the maximum displacement in the total let's assume that it's u max this is one thing the maximum displacement u static is the aesthetic displacement it depends on what the force is for example here we have p0 and if we divide it by k it will be the value of u static so p0 divided by k is the static deformation or displacement now if we divide these two values the solution will be or the answer will be a non-dimensional value and it is called dynamic magnification factor so it will be u max divided by u static and also here in the equation that we have this is the std this is transient and this part is the std state if we divide the maximum displacement in the steady state condition divided by u static it is called std dynamic magnification factor so it is written by rd which is u max of std state divided by u static and this is very straightforward rd is really easy to calculate because it will be p0 divided by k times 1 divided by 1 minus beta square divided by p0 divided by k so rd is always 1 divided by 1 minus beta square you might ask that okay what's the point of using these values let's assume that the maximum displacement here is 0 0.1 millimeter we can continue and beta was 0 0.059 beta is 0 0.059 u max is 0 0.1 millimeter u static is p0 divided by k p0 was mg 981 newton k was in our calculation 1.134 10 power by 4 newton per millimeter so this value will be 981 divided by so it will be 0 0.086 millimeter and d will be u max divided by u static so it will be 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.086 and it will be 1.16 it's very important to have these values without any calculation you can easily calculate the maximum deformation of a beam and you can apply this value as a load and also calculate what the 
maximum bending moment would be in the calculation. So here with this value of D, we have U max. Also, we can have RD, which is one divided by one minus beta square. The value is almost one here. Uh, it's very close to one. The same concept. And here you can see that uh, RD looks like to have uh, not such an effect on the solution because the dominant response is the STD state. Let's sketch the bending moment of the beam and finish this example. From the aesthetic course, we know that if we have two, end, two ends a rigid connection with the load of force P at the center of this beam with the length of L, bending moment at both ends will be PL over 8. And also the maximum bending moment in the center will be at the same value as PL over 8. So here we can sketch minus PL over 8 plus PL over 8 and again minus PL over 8. Positive, negative, negative. This is the static calculation. And if you have dynamic magnification factor, you don't need to calculate uh, for the entire beam or the effect. If you are looking for the maximum bending moment, you just need to sketch in the static situation and then multiply it by the value of dynamic magnification factor. So here P is 981 Newton, L is 5 meters. As a result, bending moment will be PL over 8, which is 981 times 5 divided by 8. It will be 613 Newton meter. This is for a static calculation. And then you can easily sketch the maximum bending moment applying the load with the given frequency. So maximum bending moment for the entire harmonic load being applied. So you just need to multiply 613 times D, which is 1.16 in this case, and it will be 711 kilonewton meter. 711 kilonewton meter, 711 kilonewton meter, newton millimeter, newton meter, newton meter, 711 newton meter, and that's all. That is the end of this example. We went through one simple example to see how the uh, harmonic load would affect the results. Uh, in the next video, I will model the same beam with ANSYS and we will see how it should be modeled with ANSYS. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.